Hey, what's up guys? Thank you so much for joining us for another video. Hey, look, one of the main reasons why I love doing community with you guys is because I get to take a trip down memory lane. That's right, memory lane. See, in elementary school, I was a spelling guru. You heard it right. I was a spelling bee champion. Yeah, sounds good. It's got a good ring to it. Samson, the spelling bee champion. All right, let me stop over exaggerating. I was an unofficial spelling bee champion. And the reason why I say that is because I've never competed in a spelling bee competition, but I bet I can stand in the paint with the best of them. See, I was a natural speller. To be honest, kiddos, I never really studied for a spelling test. I always felt as though like, these words just, they're naturally easy to spell. There was a young girl by the name of Holly Getz. Holly Getz and I, we went to elementary, middle, and high school together. Well-known fact, she graduated pretty much at the top of our class. She was the valedictorian of our senior class. She got straight A's, not only in spelling, but in everything. Once we got to middle school, my straight A's, mm, they didn't come too easy. Matter of fact, I struggled a little bit, to be honest. And I started to realize, man, spelling isn't easy. History isn't easy. Man, like I actually have to put in work. So one day I mustered up the courage to ask Holly, hey Holly, how do you get straight A's in all of your subjects? She said, duh, Samson, I just study with intensity. I was like, okay, I mean, I don't know about you, but I've never heard studying and intensity in the same sentence. The only time I had ever heard of intensity was like, while playing sports or working out or something like that. I didn't understand the concept of studying with intensity. Hmm. Random thought. Why is phone spelled with a PH instead of an F? Like that, that doesn't, that's not mind boggling to you. Or, or why is there three different ways to spell two in three different meanings? Like the English language is so weird to me. Even as a grown individual, I struggle when I'm texting because I still seem to get there and there mixed up. I know what you're thinking. Where's this going, Samson? What about effect? Have you ever thought about effect? Yeah, there's two different meanings of effect. There's two different ways to spell effect. You have effect that starts with an A on one hand, right? The one that starts with an A, it's usually a verb and it means to change something. Perfect example, my wife gave me a compliment on my shirt and it affected my day. I was a lot more pleasant because of it. Now, effect that starts with an E, it's usually a noun. And it means it, it's a result of change. So the example I could use for that is like medication, right? We know with certain medications, there's certain side effects. So it's referring to the result of change that medication can cause to your body. I know what you're thinking. Why in the world are we talking about grammar, Samson? See, both words, effect and effect, they both are key to what we're talking about today. And both of them are easily confused. But let's think about what we're gonna talk about today. Today, we are going to be talking about ways that we can influence, impact, and change each other. You see, Holly Getz, she totally changed the way I viewed schoolwork. I knew from that day forward after having a conversation with her that if I wanted straight A's, I would have to simply study with intensity. So how do you affect or change the people around you? What is your, what does your influence look like? What is the you effect? In other words, what is the result of that change? Bear with me folks. Today, we're gonna talk about it. And I know some of you kids, you're like, you know what? Yeah, I affect, I affect a lot of people around me. You know, I acknowledge that I have influence. I acknowledge that I influence a lot of people around me. And it may be because you hold some type of leadership position. Maybe you're a captain of your sports team. Maybe you're a captain of the cheerleader team. Maybe you represent your student body government at your school. Or, or maybe you're like in a social club or one of the extracurricular activities at school. 
and you probably lead in that area. So it's easy for you to say that you have a good circle of influence. But then there's others of you, right? That are probably like, man, look, Samson, I'm not gonna lie to you. The me effect is currently on a zero. Like I don't influence anyone around me. Like literally, like even the family dog does not listen to me. A, a matter of fact, you're probably thinking that because you, you're probably thinking, well, I need to be a better leader to have influence or Maybe you're like a lot of people and you just want to kind of play the background and you don't like to be on the forefront of, you don't like the attention. And then there's some of you out there that are probably like, you know, I, I'm, I'm still young, Samson. Like, I don't have it all figured out. I, I, I don't know what the next two, three, four years will look like for me. So how can I expect to bring change to other people? Guys, think about it. If you had a relationship with anyone, you have influence. That's right, I said it. If you have a relationship with anyone, that means that you have influence. So that means family, friends, classmates, you have it. Ladies and gentlemen, you have the you effect. And no matter how small or big that circle of influence seems, you have more of it than you think. See today, we're gonna to be looking at someone who used what they had to affect people around them, even though they didn't have much. See, what we're gonna be reading was recorded by John. For those of you who don't know, John was one of Jesus' closest followers and students. In fact, one of the last things that Jesus did while he was on the cross was ask John to care for his mother after he died. So we can read these writings knowing that it was written by a person who was a trusted eyewitness of Jesus. It's John 6, 1 through 14. Follow me as I read this. Let me just cue it up here. John 6, 1 through 14. And let me give you some context. During Jesus' three years of ministry, everywhere he went, there were large crowds that followed him. Now, it could be because they wanted to you know, they probably heard about the miracle signs and wonders. Some people probably wanted healing. Others are probably like me and they just wanted to hear this eloquent, this well eloquent spoken speaker. Like, I think that today, like if, if Jesus was here, like he'd probably be, he'd probably be, well, he'd probably be one of the best filmmakers that we'd have today because he loved to tell stories. Either way, there's one thing that we can all realize. There's one thing that we can all come to a conclusion about, and it's that Jesus had influence. John 6, 1 through 14. After this, Jesus crossed over to the far side of the Sea of Galilee, also known as the Sea of Tiberias. A huge crowd kept following him wherever he went because they saw his miraculous signs as he healed the sick. Then Jesus climbed the hill and sat down with his disciples around him. It was nearly time for the Jewish Passover celebration. Jesus soon saw a huge crowd of people coming to look for him. Turning to Philip, he asked, where can we buy bread to feed all these people? Now, I don't know about you, if I was Philip, I would have looked at Jesus and said, what are you asking me for? You're the miracle worker. All right, let's pick back up in six. He was testing Philip for he already knew what he was going to do. Philip replied, even if we worked for months, we wouldn't have enough to feed them. So let me kind of give you an example there. That's like going to Chick-fil-A and ordering 5,000 chicken sandwiches, meals, or something like that, right? So here we are. Then Andrew Simon Peter's brother spoke up. There's a young boy here with five barley loaves and two fish. But what good is that with this huge crowd? Tell everyone to sit down, Jesus said. So they all sat down on the grassy slopes. The men alone numbered about 5,000. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks to God and distributed, and distributed them to the people. Afterward, he did the same with the fish and they all ate as much as they wanted. After everyone was full, Jesus told his disciples, now gather the leftovers so that nothing is wasted. So they picked up the pieces and filled 12 baskets with scraps 
left by the people who had eaten from the five barley loaves. When the people saw him do this miraculous sign, they exclaimed, surely he is the prophet we have been expecting. Now, the role of Jesus here, it's understood. We all knew what his role entailed of. But I would like to believe that the real MVP was the boy. You see, he didn't let the little bit of food that he had stop him from being influential. Uh, th this boy, he wasn't a leader. He wasn't super athletic. Like, he wasn't a preacher. Matter of fact, he's not even cool enough to get his name mentioned in the text. But guess what? It was his willingness that Jesus was looking for. And I believe, we should believe, that it's not about our ability to do anything, it's about our availability. Are we able? It's not about ability, but are we able? Are we available? So pay attention to that, guys. And I know what you're thinking. Samson, how do I apply this today? Well, here are three things that I wanna leave you with. One is identify the who. You got it right. Yeah, look around you. Who is it around you that could use your influence? Secondly, identify the what. The need, what is the need? Guys, we have to pay attention to the need. What is the need around you where you can say, you know what, I, I believe that I can impact, affect, or change, or better, better yet, influence in that capacity. And then lastly, identify what you can do to help it. And do it, yeah, like Nike, just do it. Matter of fact, Drake, he says a lyric, and it's pretty dope. He says, you spend too much time on captions and not enough time on actions. Super poetic, super dope. But guys, guess what? The main point is you have more of an effect than you think. Think about it. I want you to think about it for, for a second. As we close this lesson, who in your life has had an effect on you for the good? God can use you to have that same effect on others. All we have to do is show up. Thank you for your time. Guys, I can't wait to do community and fellowship with you again. I love you. And until next time, be easy.